I just walked up to the signal. This, this is crazy because we've been coming here for years. You hear that? Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. We get text. Alright everybody, thanks for tuning in. Hope your week is going well. For us, it's been one of those weeks. Everyone's off busy doing other people things and stuff and that. And today, it's time to go digging. Waiting on Keebs, he should be here shortly. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a drive up. We have a couple hours and we're going to go to where I found my coin spill several days back. Because as you can quite well imagine, that place needs to be gone over lightly and slowly right it's a very interesting area it's a small old village type setup with colonial home sites and then off in the back several camps from the 1800s so we got the gear we got the time just wait for keeps to show up and we'll hit the road you know where we're going uh yeah where the trees have no names right if there's one thing I hate is classifying new species. Yeah. Engage. So like I was saying, it's an interesting area. We have a colonial home site, and then we have like 1800s cabin sites. And being that the cabin sites were not documented or logged, everything that comes out of here is great. So like the other day, we're not looking for trophies, we're looking for anything. Even those big old casings that I find are period to when the cabin was here. So right. we keep them all. So that's it. Let's just see what we can find. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Well, it's tough when you're where the trees have no names. Yeah. Hmm. So this is pretty interesting. Since the last time we were here, this tree finally gave out. It's about 20 inches deep under there in this brick. Just goes hmm. to show you, man, there's probably so much stuff that we're just never gonna hear. You and know? you know how old that tree is? For yeah. that to be on top of that? Right. Wow. All right, so basically we've started at the colonial site. We're right on the backside of the cellar hole. This has been dozed, uh, who knows when, by loggers. I just walked up to the signal, and this is crazy because we've been coming here for years. 8485. You hear that? I hear that. And it's, it's in all the pushed over rock. Unbelievable. Do you see that? I. I saw I see that. <laughs> In between the rocks. So you pulled either a Connecticut or a King George out of here about uh, four years ago? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. We got text. Yeah. Oh, uh, Octoria, I think it's a, I think it's a Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, I haven't found a Connecticut in a while, if that's what it is. Hmm. Wow. Oh, that's a 30 second curse, I'll take it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Literally 10 feet behind the hole. Huh. I don't know if it's left by the loggers, but it would have had a hook here and you, you can see what's left of the sheet metal where the spring latch would have been. Cause it's again, right behind the hole where it's all been pushed back. All right, same area, another target. And this is great for a couple of reasons. One, we have a great display for this home site and museum. And two, it's awesome to know that there 
is still stuff at these locations. Not doing much of a different approach today than I usually would when I get to a site like this or have been here. Same thing over and over. I get to the cellar hole, work my way around. Oh. Ooh. Lantern part. Yeah. Wow. Still, that's cool. And from that day forward, they could never fill the lantern all the way to the top. <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, though signals yeah so in this area this is what these sites look like we're talking 18 inch deep holes and literally eight by five feet that's all that's left of them it's kind of a mess and these were not easy to find but we keep coming back we keep picking away and we keep finding things <laughs> A spoon bowl. Very cool. And it's iron. And a file. Lots of stuff still out here. So as I was saying to Keebs when we were coming in, it's painfully obvious out here. This is the one small flat plateau in a mess of bad land. And this is where all the targets are. So I just dug the spoon, the file. See that plug? Check this out. Awesome suspension. That is great. So just goes to show you, keep picking through the iron and you will find things. I just found suspension. Oh, yeah? And spoonage, how you doing? Weird bullets. Are they big casings? Uh, no, little casing, but a huge round. So, Keebs is working the same ridge line, basically, where I found my coins, except further away from here, but it's the same ridge line. And See, it looks like a Rimfire 33 or something. Yeah, man, tons of ammunition out here. What oh, is a three ringer? <laughs> that came out of one of those casings that I literally must have dug 40 or 50 of them out here. Or oh, two ringer. I see the rings. Yeah, they're huge. Yeah. There's targets there and you never well, know. Well, if the hole's there, I'm thinking, I'm looking for the, the outhouse. Hmm. Place has a swimming hole, cellar hole kind of feel to it if you to just dig them all, you'll find target after target after target in a very small area. That's the casing I was speaking of. And if you've been following, you've seen us dig lots of these out here. Oh yeah, gosh. Right. Well, you know, I've only ever found one of the slugs, just like you, but tons of casings. Are oh. they longer than this? No, they're all the same. That's weird, it's like a handgun then. You gotta figure, whoever was out here, it was definitely during the uh, Wild West era and after. Yeah. So. So I'm standing in the cellar hole. <laughs> yeah, not very big, is it? No. A couple of square nails and this harmonica reed parcel in the same hole, just off the side of the, the cellar hole over here. Actually. Let me see. Key see. Perfect. <laughs> All right, one right after another. Now, this rang up 36 to 38 which generally means some type of solid iron target. Once you get under 34 to 32, you're dealing with a lot more nail size stuff, but look at that. Love scissors. Mild meat Keebler, right? <laughs> All right. Get on the glove, it's a... Mucho Hendrico! 
Yeah. <laughs> that is something. I know. What it would it take to bend that, you'd say? All right. Kick to the head. <laughs> cool find. Yeah. Either that or it really fit the horse. He could have had a cleft foot. Yeah. Weird. Target time. Oh. Oh. Mini suspension. Beautiful. Yeah. It was either for the child or the dog. Yeah. I mean, these are so small, could have been anywhere. Yeah. I haven't moved. I've been in this, you know, one little spot. It's just been target after target, lots of bolts, sheet metal. That is a very big file. Files. Um, like I was saying to Keebs, we'll be picking away at this one for a long time. So, we're going to take a little walk. I'm going to show him where that coin spill was the other day. and Maybe the ground shifted. Maybe more things have popped up. Hopefully. Never know. Alright, so we've been here a bit. I've gone all around where the spill was. I just dug a handful of those casings. Guy must have been taking shots in every direction. But Keebs over here, sounding like he's got something interesting. Came out of the ground like that. I don't think it's silver, but... Came oh, out clean. it's probably that Britannia metal. Yeah. Jen and I did find uh, some spoonage of that material. Ah. Very nice. Thin. But durable. Huh. Yeah, it rang up really weird. It was either going to be a nickel or gold. And it was this. Still a very cool find. Yeah. Every little bit that comes out of this site is mm. wonderful because this is an SD discovery. Yeah. And it's all spread about too. Yeah. Lead projectile. I think I may have found another site. I am about a hundred feet off from that one and a hundred feet off from that one. Further down the hill, listen to this. That's not normal for out in the woods. We're hearing iron and we're finding iron. Interesting. All right, so Keebs is working next to this. Uh, we don't know if it's a cellar hole. It's awfully narrow, but it's got rocks in it, but it's just absolutely loaded with, you know, nail iron. And we both did a sweep around and the field is huge. The iron field that is. Dug a few iron chunks. Uh, and some slag from like lead, but I have a signal over here that's got a sweet sound to it, like that bird. Number's a bit odd. That stands out. Oh. Well, that would make sense. Stapled animal, it's a rivet. I should have known. It's been a while since I've dug one. What do you got, Keebs? First of all, Oh, yeah. Square nails. I don't know. I don't know. Looks toolish. Yeah, like a small hammer. But that. Oh, from a window. I think so, with the... Uh, like the swivel part to lock it. I don't think it's... I don't know. I don't know exactly, but definitely window parts. Yeah, yeah. Huh. This is interesting. Because mm. we said before, no records of this. And that would make four rogue sites off of the back of a colonial site from the 1800s here. Well, I only got a few more minutes, then we gotta go do other normal people things, and I'm gonna take one more sweep around just to see how big the iron field is, and that'll be it. All right, so I did the walk. That's part of a harmonica read, people. Then I just went a little bit further that way. Same thing, found a square level spot, iron bed, and pulled out a drop knife. Fifty-eight 
fascinating. Canned beans, canned peaches, they will live in the life of Riley. Hmm. Again, in addition to our discoveries, this place is intriguing. Yeah. That would make one, two, three, four, five footprints in terrible forest, no road in, mostly late 1800s, the, yeah. the tin cans. Yeah. I mean, we know logging happened here at some point, but yeah. <coughs> either way. Well, the theories are endless. I'm yeah. Sure. Gonna have to get on the guru to check into that time frame for this area, because that many people, there's gotta be something written down somewhere. Yeah. Till next time, stay young. Always keep them guessing. What uh, say you? Live free or die. There you go. You got it from the guy with the live free or die colored shirt on. <laughs> See ya.